Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, how are you? Where are you coming in from? Good, good. Uh, I'm from Melbourne. Can you okay. hear me okay? Yes, I can. Uh, no problem at all. That's all good. good. Yeah. And okay. you're in New Zealand, right? I am indeed, yes. And so is my son, Jack, who's just gone off into host the Indonesian room because uh, uh, Jan was unfortunately able, unable to make it tonight. So, uh, oh, okay. Is. Yeah, so what brings you along? Oh. It's always hard to know how many well, people will um, have, have in the, these sessions. So uh, you never know how many yeah, people no, will turn up and so, stuff so like that. Good. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, anyway, it's a great opportunity to, um, uh, for the first time, uh, engage uh, in a live way with the community. Um, I, I've been following, um, oh, here we go, Rhett has joined us as well. Yep, good day. Hello. Are you ready? Hello. Rhett, how, where are you coming in from, Rhett? I'm coming in from Brisbane. Okay. I'm not Brisbane, Sunshine Coast in Sunshine Australia. Coast. Cool. Yeah. Two Australians in the room. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, someone has to live there, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which good. part of Sunshine Coast, if, if you don't mind me asking? I'm living in Caloundra. Okay. Oh, very good. And you guys, are you, you, you also in the area? No, I'm, I'm in Melbourne at the moment, South Melbourne. Bank, just, okay. just uh, near the city, yeah. Okay. So we've got, okay. and then... Think, Robert, you're from New Zealand, aren't you? That's correct. I'm in uh, Tauranga, New Zealand, which is just about well, two hours south of Auckland. Um, All right. But it's, it's sort a of colder. A bit colder, but well, actually, it's warmer here than it is in Auckland. Um, but uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, we're we're in the kind of equivalent of the Gold Coast of New Zealand. <laughs> Tauranga's oh, the good. Country. Yeah, Tauranga, Tauranga is the uh, the tourist tourist destination for New Zealanders because of all the beaches and everything. So that's the way it goes. Right. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So you learn something new every day, right, guys? There you yeah. go. So what brings you, um, yeah, uh, how, how do you pronounce your name? Bowen, is it? Bowen? Bobon. Yeah, or you can Bobin. call me Bob. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Bobin. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway, it's great to, great to join um, for the first time live um, to engage uh, with the community. Um, I've been following, um, like I guess many um, people, uh, just from the sides, um, the whole Cardano um, uh, ecosystem and the community. You know, I've started to get a lot more actively involved in the last, so let's say, month or so. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also an investor. I've got a reasonable amount of um, uh, Cardano or ADA um, coins. Yeah. But um, what brings me to uh, to us here is that I've uh, been uh, lucky enough to have uh, sort of travelled and lived, uh, you know, in different markets in Asia and Europe um, and Africa as well. I've uh, spent the last uh, six and a half years in Africa, mm -hmm. um, firstly in South Africa um, and then in uh, Ghana, in West Africa. So um, I, uh, yeah, so I worked with Toyota, um, Toyota Tsusho Corporation, TTC, which is like the trading and finance distribution arm of the Toyota Motor Corporation. Uh, I worked for one of their subsidiaries uh, there as a managing director. And um, yeah, and they're basically, they're, the TTC business is uh, the most diversified business in Africa, actually. Mm. Um, they're the brand behind a lot of the big brands, you know, the Heinekens and the Carrefours and the L'Oreal's and so on. And what they do is they, um, because CFAO, the subsidiary that I was part of, um, they're a French, a French outfit that the Toyota bought out. Uh, they've been in Africa for about 160 years. So they basically went in when the, the French colonialists moved into Africa. And so, um, so they've got a lot of infrastructure there. Um, they're present in every, every African country except for um, uh, Libya. Um, and they're in mobility, they're in uh, pharmaceutical space, um, um, energy uh, and consumer goods. And I worked in the consumer goods area. So, um, you know, living and working there and getting to know um, the different markets, um, you, you see plenty of opportunity, you know, and, um, and I've got a couple of ideas that I wanted to put forward. But then obviously when I came across the... Uh, you know, the capability of the Cardano um, system, the ecosystem, um, you know, I put two, you know, uh, sort of turned to it together and found that um, this is a great 
uh, opportunity to get involved and um, uh, propose a solution and I have an idea. But also, um, you know, I'm just sort of looking at whether I get involved as a sort of community advisor at this stage or I work towards developing a proposal that can be plugged into the project catalyst um, uh, sort of process. Um, so I'm gearing up hopefully for fund seven. Um, and, um, you know, this is the first interaction in terms of just getting some uh, live feedback on maybe an approach uh, that I should take and how it works and that sort of thing. So um, that's sort of where I'm at, um, wanting to get involved as a community advisor, if that makes sense to provide feedback I've already registered. I'm on the Telegram um, communication platform there. So I'm starting to you know, absorb a lot of the messages, messages that come through those um, uh, sort of uh, platforms. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yes, yeah, so, so any advice and feedback is yes. uh, most welcome. Um, so for you can anyone could be a community advisor, uh, but that's as far as Catalyst concerned, it's community advisor for the uh, assessing the proposals in each of the funding yeah. rounds. So the community advisor's role has finished for Fund Six um, because yeah. you've gone through and done the assessment. So the next time around, it'll be for Fund Seven. Uh, one of the key things yeah. that was done differently with uh, Fund Six compared to previous round uh, funds was that uh, there was a rule that sort of said if if you uh, had not um, if you had a proposal in catalyst uh, then um, yeah. uh, you couldn't be a community advisor but in fund six the requirement has been uh, uh, relaxed a little bit so that now you could you could be a community advisor, uh, as long as you didn't assess any of the proposals in the challenges that you had your own proposals on. Otherwise, that was uh, the key thing. I think it's uh, uh, good. Uh, uh, all right. Sorry. Hold on a minute. I've just got an issue here um, that uh, go for it. You, Utah doesn't have permissions to record things. Okay. Is No. No, he doesn't. We are waiting even... to start the, the, the storm hall, but we don't have the right for record to the call. Okay, is Felix still in the uh, main room at all? Mm, um, I don't see him and I sent a message to Discord, but we are all there waiting to some permission to record it. Okay, he may not have actually set the rules. I don't know if I've got the permissions at all um, to do anything. Oh, hold on a sec, because uh, Felix is the one that usually sets it up. Um, so I can't see that I've got any permissions to do anything myself um, over here on this side. I've got permissions to record, so it may be that just um, uh, Yuta needs to go back into the main room and be assigned as a co-host or a co-host can go in there um, to do something in there. Um, okay, um, but Felix is the only who can give uh, hit the permissions. Yes, uh, we've got Jack popping in here. Uh, Jack, have you, what's going on? Sorry, sorry for a moment, Bob, we'll just sort no, things out. No, it's okay, go I for it. join my room. Oh, that's all right. You're good. So you're doing it. <laughs> they obviously saw, oh, this Pakia, yeah, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Indonesia. That's all right. <laughs> I can't relate that's all right. to that. Um, Jack, <laughs> you've, you've got co-host um, privileges. Can you go back into the main room and give Yuta co-host privileges so he can record the Japanese room? Just dive in there. Um, because if I, dry, if I, I dive out... Do I go into the Japanese room and do I just record I, it? I think you just need to go back to the main room and try and set uh, co-host permissions to Yuta. You should be able to do that because you've got co-host status. Okay? Because will talk to Yuta, okay? Yeah. Because you two was yeah. coming in late. Okay, okay, if you can do that, and then you can jump back in. Thanks a lot. Right. Um, uh, how do I get to the main room? <laughs> just, just leave. Just leave this just... meeting. Make sure leave the room, not the meeting. Oh, leave room. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I... Cool. Um, right. So uh, back on track again. <laughs> sorry about that. Yep. Yeah, no, it's all good. Uh, it's a, um, should I should I give you a bit of background of what I've what I've done? What I'm looking yeah, at? yeah, you give it and I'm then out. I can yeah. You could address both of us. Um hmm. yeah, I um I I spent the first 46 years of my life in Africa. 
and then came over to um, Australia. I uh, spent most of the time in Zimbabwe and South Africa. So um, I've had a bit of experience in Southern Africa. And um, I decided, well, worked in engineering. That's my background. I had, uh, had my own business after a while, after learning a bit, and um, worked in emissions control, control of emissions and refrigeration. And since being in Australia, it's all been about commission control and in industries and stuff like that. Hmm. And I've recently semi-retired and um, I started to, I got excited about Cardano in 2014 and I bought some, not enough really. And I forgot all about them until earlier on this year before the pandemic. So uh, when things got started to move again. And well, um, I'm really a doctor, mate. Yeah, it was too. I mean, yeah, then uh, in 2014, they had a bit of, bit of excitement as well, and the, the prices were pretty high. Then they went down, and now they come back up again. Mm -hmm. um, and being retired and having time on my hands to start thinking about um, some, some ideas that I had, uh, developing ideas to try, and, not even, to try and accommodate some of the problems that I see. Uh, starting to evolve, uh, especially um, uh, evolve in the world, um, especially Bitcoin, which I see from a missions point of view is a complete, um, you know, it's like goes against my complete way of thinking to have something like that hanging around. Um, so I have a few ideas as well. And um, I just sort of started coming to these events to learn a bit more, and I've been studying a bit. I've got I've got the Telegram, is it Telegram? I've got the Telegram, Telegram app, and I've got Discord, and I've got um, GitHub. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not familiar. I'm, I use WhatsApp because I've got a lot of contacts and people. I speak to, I connect with people in Africa and England and Perth and. Um, that's about it, really. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm trying to sort of work my way up to a proposal. I've got some ideas. Um, and I just need to find somewhere to get some of the sort of costings of what what people cost to, to generate these. I mean, I know a website developer costs so much, but then you've got the, uh, you've got the added problem of um, um, going forward with that, you know, you need, a, you need a company to get going and things like that. And then you, so I've been looking at the proposals and I see that it's, 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 it's good to have a team behind you. Um, you've, you've sort of uh, looked into your proposal and um, we can give you sort of some, some of their thoughts of which way to go. And um, is it, can anyone see me? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I can see you. Yep. You can also me. Yeah. And so um, uh, the next thing I, I, I think I'll be doing is um, looking around Sunshine Coast here to find some some people who are prepared to sort of jump in with me and 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 put a proposal together um, for Final Seven. Okay, so um, you're, you're both uh, aware of sort of that Fund 7's uh, approaching in terms, I think it will be about mid-November, I think it opens up. Um, yeah. In ter terms of um, how I, I've i been doing the Catalyst stuff for like, I've had proposals on since Fund 2 um, and helped lots of people out and things like that. So I can, and uh, I've, I've probably written about, I think, about 15 proposals for Fund 7. <laughs> I mean, Fund 6. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, 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 for different group, like for Eastern Town Hall, and I've helped quite a lot of people out. So, um, yeah. And they've all actually received quite high ranking. So, obviously, I'm doing something right <laughs> on that yeah. area. But um, so, if there's any sort of questions and stuff, more than happy to run through and just uh, discuss that. So, you've each suggested that you've, you've each, uh, just to recap, 
Each said that you've had experience in Africa, so you know the African market. Um, you both appear to be aware of, of what Catalyst is, um, but not necessarily yeah. uh, familiar with necessarily what it takes to put a proposal together or the different types of proposals. Would, would that be a correct sort of assumption on, on those sort of areas? Yeah. yeah. Uh uh, yeah, I mean, I've I've been uh, I've seen the process, so the phases in sort of theoretical form, um, but I just I'm just running behind the scenes because uh, it's multidimensional. Uh, for example, you just mentioned that you supported some um, teams to put together proposals for Fund Seven, and they're getting some early good rankings. Um, so. Yeah, I just wonder how does that work? Is it a bit of a political process or not a but a marketing no. process behind the scenes? Or um, I won't say political, but more like a exposure. Is there a way to do it efficiently and effectively? Well, the, there's um, so Catalyst itself is more or less kind of a seed fund, you know, to kickstart, get things going, right? To start yeah. things off. Yeah. More than say, um, I've got a complete proposal, boom, here it is. It's actually designed to solve like the, the sort of problems that you've got, which is to um, bring 10 people together. It's actually intended to bring um, people from the Cardano ecosystem together and to work on yeah. problems together. Right. Um, so some proposals do come in fully formed. They've got you know a complete idea of what they want to do, and that's fine. But uh, in the first week of any of the funds, there's the insight phase. And the insight phase okay. is basically to try and um, get people to just say, hey, look, I've spent a lot of time in Africa. I've noticed this. So, Bob, and what you were saying about um, uh, you know, your experience within the FMCG sort of sector within Africa, you might have several bits of insights. So now, the insights are really a title and uh, I can't even remember the word limit or the character limit, but it's mm -hmm. pretty small. Yeah. And the idea yeah. here is just to get people collaborating within the Catalyst environment and discussing ideas and commenting on different ones. And the first week is about just doing that and building relationships and stuff like that that are yeah. going on. Um, and then all those proposals will just, uh, all those insights just get archived in the second week. They're, they're not proposals, they're just insights, they get archived, they're there. And then you go into the proposal phase. And one of the things, um, you can either go in and say, have a fully formed proposal, in which case you'll have very, very little interaction, or you can have kind of a draft proposal. Hey, this is my idea. This is what I'm thinking of. These are the sort of people I need, anyone else. And you might find that similar people have, got, uh, have put up another proposal that might look the same. So you, you may actually try and merge them together and pull them mm -hmm. together in that way and start collaborating, right? So yeah. uh, that's very much the, the driving force as a kind of uh, catalyst as a uh, sensing machine or a, a sensing system of what are the all the opportunities out there in a local context, okay? Um, and by basically working in with other people, yeah. you start to um, get better ideas. So that's that's the core essence of what the catalyst process itself is about that does not prevent you yeah. from putting a fully formed idea up there yeah yeah okay i mean um, i at the moment i run a consultancy which is focused on supporting businesses to trade internationally mm -hmm. um you know expand and have export strategies and i work with africa in a commercial sense so um the proposal would um uh, let's say um uh, support that business, but it would address some underlying very real needs that exist in the African space. Um, so I guess I want to use, you know, my 20 plus year of commercial experience and African experience to bring this proposal together. And uh, for sure, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are in within the ecosystem that could play a role um, within that. Um, I've got, um, you know, some good uh, ex-colleagues and people I've met on the ground in Africa that I would engage as part of this broader process because uh, I think um, if you've got stakeholders that are in, in the markets um, and it would be an Africa-wide um, solution, then that would be an integral part of it because, um, you know, you don't want to be managing it from remote and it's a decentralised um, sort of um, business model, hopefully, as well. So, 
Um, yeah, well, that, that yeah, um, touches... That sounds with, great, what you've said. Yeah, touches with, with what Red was saying before. You don't necessarily have to go off and create a company to do all of this. It could, in fact, be um, done all on chain. Um, in the sense that it can yeah. be distributed. You don't necessarily have to go and form a limited library. Yeah, yeah. You keep it decentralized if your idea suits that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's obviously different sort of levels that you put in. There is a, um, so what you would have seen if you've looked at any of the proposals to begin with that were coming through in sort of the early challenges, there was a lot of education stuff you know, about yeah. outreach, just, that's really kind of getting the word out there, the distri uh, distribution market of Cardano and what it might, you know, vision-wise represent. Yeah. Um, and as the challenges have sort of expanded, you get um, this, you know, there's a developer ecosystem challenge. There's a DApp integration thing, because obviously to get a lot of stuff built, you need developers and you need um, applications to come along. Um, yeah. So the and progressively, some aspects of Catalyst will get more and more technical, and others others will get more and more market focused. Um, that happens, mm -hmm. and some will be you're more uh, closer to a traditional sort of business corporate structure. Others will be purely all on chain, um, you know, for highly distributed sort of things. At the moment, the the yeah. on chain sort of things are more in the DeFi camp. Uh, whereas the sort of business marketing focus are uh, things that are on the ground, uh, trying to do things in, you know, in a particular location. So there's sort of that uh, spectrum yeah. of things that's going on. Um, so uh, really, depending on your idea, will de determine, you know, both the structure of the proposal and also, you know, whether you can reach out to other people in the community that are in Catalyst, that are in the same boat. Because there'll be a lot of other people yep. that are looking through a Catalyst and saying, I want to do something, but I just don't know what. Or I've got these skills, mm. yep. and but I need to form a team. So, you know, but I don't know who else. So the, mm. the, the um, Discord and Catalyst are your primary challenge, channel, um, channels for doing that. Um, so there's all the sort of catalyst, um, various different servers and stuff like that uh, that are going on. Um, yeah. Um, so, so other thoughts. So, so Bobin, have you gone onto the website ideascale.com? Uh, yeah, I have. I have. Um, to be honest, yeah, uh, as a as a uh, what a, a voter or something catalyst no no i haven't i've really um on a i guess at a surface level just tried to understand what all the different uh, arms and legs of the ecosystem are because okay. um, there's a lot of bits and pieces so just sort of scanning uh, initial scan to see um you know there's uh, like you mentioned the telegram there's a uh, three four different um groups there that uh, relate to advisors and um um, some other um, project catalyst announcements and so on. Um, so, and then I've got a good piece of information from one of those groups, which is the proposer uh, proposer journey, which is the uh, you know seven or eight steps or nine steps, whatever that the proposer can take. But um, so uh, I think my next step is really to also uh, Robert to look at the challenges because um, um, Rhett, I'm not sure if you're aware, you probably are, but. Uh, from what I understand, at the end of Fund 6, there's a, a challenge setting phase which relates to Fund 7 in terms of the direction for the proposals, right, Robert? Uh, yeah, not so much. Um, so one of the challenges within each of the funding rounds is a challenge setting challenge, you know, meta challenge. Yeah and, okay. and, yeah. and the aim here is that the community itself can define challenges for future funds. Uh, so one of the ones I've got up is, um, I'll, I'll throw it to you, um, and we can just sort of give you an example of it. But um, uh, this is one of the challenge setting ones that I've uh, wrote and put up there. Now that's in the Eastern Town Hall website, but, um, just to be clear. But that's um, uh, for Fund 7. It's trying to set up a category for social and environmental finance. Um, and so that's the structure of it. Just, you know, you've got your problem definition, your title, your problem definition, and what's important. Um, and then the amount that you're asking for. And the community will um, 
uh, vote on that. I don't get the funds. It just becomes another challenge in Fund 7. So if this one gets voted on, mm. it will then become a challenge that people can put proposals in. Okay. Now, it's intentionally yeah, set right. quite low at 250000 for US uh, as a total pool. Uh, and the reason for that is the category is kind of new. So people have got to figure out what uh, what mm -hmm. is good or bad in that area, we don't know. So rather than trying to set it, say, for a million dollars, we've just set it for 250. And I might, I probably will, if mm -hmm. this gets voted in, uh, resubmit it to fund eight and then fund nine, but I may actually increase okay. the amounts as we go along. Um, yeah. And that yeah. enables uh, that sort of thing. And so the aim is, in general, is that all the challenges that occur in each of the funding rounds is actually set by the community, right? Yeah. Um, rather yeah. than, say, IOG, right? So there's some standard ones like develop ecosystem, those sort of things. But uh, yeah, we can define our own, as I have done here. Yeah. yeah. So with, um, with one of the ones, Grow Cardano, Grow Africa, Grow Cardano, I think, um, in the last yeah. fund, Will there be something like that? Because I'm, a, a, I guess there will be an Africa-based um, challenge that I can plug my opportunity and my proposal into, right? Yes. So um, the Grow um, Africa um, Grow Cardano challenge was started by actually another Melbourneite, uh, Greg, who isn't here. He, he usually co-hosts with me, uh, but he couldn't. He hasn't okay. been able to make it for the last couple of weeks. Um, but he set that one up in Fund Four, I think, and it's been repeated since. Yeah. Um, okay. And yeah. so it turns up because, as you've pointed out, there is a, a key focus within the community itself to try and focus within Asia. And to a lesser extent, we're doing a similar sort of one to grow into East Asia uh, or, and uh, across the Asian continent to try and uh, mm. bring Kadano into that area as well. Yeah. Um, so rather than, say, being focused totally on the Western Hemisphere, we're, just, we're trying to focus on those sort of areas. And so you would be able to plug your proposal into that or um, any of the other challenges, to be honest, if there's a better one that suits it. Um, also, yeah. keep in mind, there's nothing stopping you putting up multiple proposals, okay, for different yeah. pieces. All right? Yeah. Uh, um, sorry, Red, I, I don't want to hog the, um, hog no, the, no, the don't airways, go mate, if you've got it. Yeah. Um, um, I guess it might be relevant, uh, will be relevant for sure. Um, in terms of um, sort of confidentiality, you know, people, uh, there are a lot of great ideas out there. People, I know it's a, co a collaborative system and I'm definitely open to collaboration, but do you get any people uh, sort of, you know, taking the idea and running with it and all that sort of stuff? Or is that um, I think, a risk I think, that you just have to Yeah, it's just, it's just a risk I think you have to bear in terms that is open collaboration. So if you want to yeah. protect your ideas or anything else, like do not put them up on Catalyst. Look for other uh, routes to try and finance things. That, that's a key um, aspect of it. Um, so mm. what you may find, though, is that, and this is certainly the case in several different proposals, is um, uh, an entity, you know, uh, there's many moving parts to get something off the ground. Um, and so proposals are just going in for one part of that um, machinery that is required, not the whole thing. Um, sometimes, though, that is required to um, just um, uh, get distribution within the Cardano ecosystem itself so people are aware of what you're doing. Um, that's mm -hmm. another aspect to it. Uh, certainly, uh, there's a view as if you've got a bigger idea and you just really want to get build a team and um, to uh, um, you know expand on this what you're doing and get awareness within the Cardano community, then you may actually choose to only do a small piece, put a proposal up, which is a small piece of your overall picture. Okay, so you might mm -hmm. identify the opportunity, but you may not elaborate it fully, and you're just saying we're going to do that, we're mm -hmm. going to do X. On that way, and, and 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 you're not necessarily looking for funds. You just in a state make a statement. Uh, yeah, you can you can make a statement. The general, the insight phase is kind of for the statement side of things. If you do want to put up a proposal, and, and you can start putting up a proposal, and if you decide that it just isn't ready yet, or you're not getting the community tra traction that you thought with the description or something else, you can always withdraw it. 
Um, sometimes yeah. when you go into the sort of final phase of proposal writing, you can literally change that proposal into a completely different direction if, if that's what you've decided because of the feedback that you've got mm. uh, from people, yeah. those sort of things. Um, so there's quite a lot of options available for you to do that. Um, and there's also uh, the fact that you may not get funded in fund seven, you know, your first attempt. Um, you, you right. might get funded in the next one, but you've learned how you've built up a bit of a uh, community, you know, you, like you're turning up to the Eastern Town Hall, mm. that sort of stuff. And that all helps because ultimately um, it's a plutocratic voting system. Uh, largely it is based on this at this point in time because there's so many variables around which most people have no clue uh, that it's mm. going to, it's fundamentally a superstar economy in terms of votes, to be honest. What, how people feel, whether they like you, you know, whether you've got the right words in the proposal, um, whether it's aligned with everything else like that. Um, so, you know, there's yeah. a huge chunk in terms of just marketing to the voters on that side. Yeah, I've, I, I've done some voting. I've had, I've had a look at some of the, um, uh, quite a few, in fact, of the proposals. And um, yeah, I find, I mean, for a, for a guy like me looking at the technical stuff, it's quite difficult to understand. Um, uh, and th there's just so many different, uh, what you call a DeFi stuff going on. There's 10,000 coins. There's all sorts of other things that are affecting uh, the thoughts on, on Cardano. Um, and um, to try and go from a normal world, which was say 10 years ago, to this, uh, where you've got to now, you've got to figure out how to operate, you know? And um, when, we, when we're used to normally dealing with a guy we can see or, or, or next to or phone call or, you know, you, you're talking with someone that's just down the road or, or part of an organization. Now you're just talking to somebody, you have no idea um, who they are. But I have seen that there's a, the, there's, a, there's a level where people understand a certain concept and they go with it. And it's worldwide, they'll pick it up with a Cardano voting system. Yeah. One, um, of, one of the things here is like to bring up with Bobbin's prior thing around commercial sensitivity and things is actually um, the closer you get to being a sort of blockchain native proposal, let's say, um, then the less you have to worry about um, uh, how protecting your ideas, what you're actually mostly interested in is getting the, the distribution, making people aware of your idea. Um, because the value is yes, actually the, the value is actually captured in the tokens if you've got a, a good token model to go along with it, um, which means that um, it's the community which is hard to replicate, right? The ideas are easy to replicate. It's the community that isn't, okay? Um, they aren't portable. They're going to stick with you. They're going to hang around um, through the ups and downs or they're going to help you because just as we've done at the, you know, um, ADA, withholding ADA in the Cardano ecosystem, effectively we're all kind of shareholders in this whole networked organization. And so if we collaborate effectively together, then we're all uh, better off. Yeah. Um, and that model sort of replicates up. So it's quite different to um, a commercial entity, which uh, in a traditional sense, which is really predicated on private property predicated on the idea of protecting intellectual property, all of those sort of things, whereas this is quite different, quite a different approach. So the closer you become, let's say, blockchain native, for want of a better term, um, the, the less you'll be concerned about holding on to protecting your intellectual property. Um, so that's actually quite a radical, if you think of it, quite a radically different approach than um, how we've been you know, grown up or taught or told yeah. how to do things. Um, so, uh, and, and that's largely because the value itself is captured in things like tokens. And, you know, that's the, yeah. th that's the, yeah. that's the difference. 
and and so the biggest challenge yeah. there is getting adoption getting uh getting distribution getting people valuing what that token in some way and that comes down to market awareness building community all that sort of stuff right mm. yeah okay uh, yeah um no you're absolutely right i think uh robert uh it does require uh, for us to reinvent ourselves and that's you know for me uh certainly um you know cardano and the blockchain and all the uh, everything that it offers is an opportunity for me to um, take the understanding that i have to reinvent myself and then to um, collaborate with a broader community uh, i think i've uh, thankfully got a, a good collaborative style um uh, i guess i was just thinking more getting the idea to some sort of advanced level and then engaging the maximum number of stakeholders to help make it a reality but then again, of course, um, the more you collaborate, the more you know um, sort of inputs and insights you get into the model itself, which then you know makes it grow and get better and, and so on. So I understand exactly where you're coming from, and um, something that you know I personally need to, I guess, uh, just uh, reflect on and, and manage. You know, so but yeah, um, it's all good. And just you mentioned in just now, you were mentioning tokens. We all share in the. The, the value of the spreading the token. What do you mean there exactly? Are you well, referring it, to being an ADA holder or are you referring to some other uh, concept? Um, so referring to being an ADA holder in this case. Okay. So right. because, yeah. because we all yeah. own, you know, if you own ADA um, and there's various ways to to get a hold of ADA, you can buy it, you can be a stake pool operator, those yeah. sort of yeah. things. Yeah. But because you hold them, uh, in a sense, you're participating uh, you're kind of like a shareholder yeah. in in the, yeah. this networked organization. And so yeah, yeah, fair the, enough. The more we as collectively can grow it, the better off we are. Um, and inside of that, that model just replicates itself. It gets, you know, the while mm. Ada and Cardano may be the base level foundation, there's nothing stopping a smaller token system existing in that. And then there's another one inside of that and inside of that. Yeah, the Russian doll kind of situation. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Sorry, that, that's that's sort of basically what my ideas are about. Um, where you where you have an idea, and then around that idea, you have to introduce a token, and that token has to increase in value. But like Ada's value has gone up, so it's it takes it takes a bit of time, but. The, the, the sort of ideas I have would be uh, would be totally collaborated. I don't think um, it's open. I think it's called open source, open where you just let the idea go in and you just encourage people to join you to get to 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 get the idea done uh, or get the project underway um, and uh, generate a token around that, whatever your whatever your concept is, and that token has to also i suppose you would you would I, I would take quite a large number of the token and if it goes from 0 0.001 cent to to one cent you've made quite a bit of money but uh, the reason i'm doing this is not it's not really for the money is to try and get out there and solve some of these some of these problems that are around the world today you know and uh, how we can how we can get a path going forward that's going to um, rely on it's going to rely on the, the sort of citizens of the world to sort of vote it through and and um, get the change happening. I mean, um, from the environmental just, point of view, it's happening already. Hmm. So, in a um, one sense, though, that um, the the value of the token is actually quite useful to consider. It's very similar to the concept of profit, right? Um, so, or growth, yeah. we want to grow it. And if we can grow it, then we can do more of what we're doing. Um, and so uh, if we're trying to solve a particular gnarly problem somewhere, then uh, we've got to get the resources to try and uh, solve that. Now there's two types of resources that are available to us in this uh, kind of environment that we're in, because fundamentally a blockchain is about coordinating people, right? So yep. one, we've got yeah. the ability to co coordinate people, which is one aspect. And the other aspect is we need capital resources to do things if we're doing anything in the actual physical building things or 
distributing stuff. We need capital. Um, well, you so have to, you have to pay someone a wage. Right. So you might have to pay someone a wage, um, those sort of things. So a token can actually uh, help with that significantly. It's not unlike um, a public company that needs to ensure that its share value is increased because that gives them access to cheaper capital, right? working capital, mm -hmm. those sort of things to do things, right? Means that their corporate paper and so on is worth, you know, they can get cheaper debt basically to do what they're doing and therefore grow their market. So thinking about a token and like that, and it doesn't have to be uh, a single token um, because we've got this base infrastructure layer, which is effectively a, a very sophisticated bookkeeping system, um, it opens up the door for all sorts of different opportunities um, in terms of how we do, for uh, Bob, and you, you're, you're obviously in international trade, um, so that's right with intermediaries, that's right with sort of all the sort of uh, contracting and uh, requirements. Contract stuff, yeah. 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 Um, and all this sort of insurance and things like that. So if you can make that far more efficient in different ways, then um, in principle, everyone is going to be better off um, on that area. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there's a lot of the, ex um, ex the existing capability that plugs straight into the model, whether it's smart contracts or, you know, the digital ID stuff or, um, you know, traceability, you know, the traceability solutions. So the good thing, I think, and, and I guess, uh, You've been around a few funds now, Robert. Everybody's very passionate about their idea, but there's a definitely a come to Jesus moment when you present it to the um, to the community and see what they think about it. You know, so yeah. um, and that's that's a, a that's a, a very um, a good thing. Um, so you've got to make sure you've got the right idea. And then back to your point, which I think is a key one here, is the marketing aspect of it or the communicating it. Well well to all the voters and the stakeholders in the right way um, so that, you know, they believe in it. And I, I do wonder to what degree is that a very robust lobbying process or is it something that, you know, you, do, you can do three, four key things and, and you're good in terms of people getting, you know, getting the message across to the broader voter base. So I'll go uh, and dig a little bit. In, in yeah, it, it, it works. depends on, um, you know, what you're targeting at the moment. So for context, I'm from a, a very technical background. I've been in the blockchain space before there were blockchains um, as well. Uh, okay. So, okay. you know, it was, um, so I've been sitting around and I have, I'm from yeah. a very uh, um, computer science, very technical background in finance, okay. um, not, not just your sort of top end fine, high performance, low level sort of trading market systems and payment systems, international trade payment, okay. all of that. Yeah. Um, so I'm really familiar with a lot of both the technical stack and how to apply it in a sense of finance. Uh, the majority of people that are in, coming into the blockchain space are not, right? Um, so my particular interest is, and as I say, you can tell by the fact I did that grow social and environmental finance one, is my interest is in applying a finance to social and environmental change. Right, that's what I've been doing for the last four years um, and impact of investing and things like that. Uh, but again, most people aren't familiar with that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to be, uh, several of my proposals and stuff like that, have, I've intentionally not knew they weren't get, going to get voted for, right? But um, my aim was really just to lift the bar and use them as references for later on when uh, you know, I was saying, right, I think we've now got the capability to do smart contracts. That's where my specialty lies. So that's uh, you know where I'm going into doing things. And I'm not interested in just doing the token flipping models, which are what the DEX is and a lot of the DeFi stuff is. I know those well, but I'm not interested in doing those. Right? Mm -hmm. So how do you shift the conversation? So what we're seeing now more within the Cardano space because of the focus, say, on Africa, is um, you know, there's quite a big push within the summit around impact related investing um, and impact related projects, uh, working with governments to try and lift, uh, you know, the idea of economic identity is really about trying to lift a whole lot of people's boat. So uh, ESG, ESG and sustainable finance and that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, but a lot of people aren't familiar with that sort of stuff uh, or, mm -hmm. 
uh, let alone how to translate that into the blockchain space. Um, so, you know, that that challenge setting one there was, I mean, I have no idea whether it will get voted yeah. in or not, but um, uh, certainly a lot of people were interested in it. But what you can also see, the problem in terms of that proposal there was that the key metrics, there aren't any key metrics for mm -hmm. a social and environmental DeFi type of environment at the moment. So how do you judge yeah. whether you're making any success or not? So part mm -hmm. of this proposal yeah. was to get, you know, introduce those ideas. Um, yeah. And so it really depends. Pay attention to the challenges themselves because they do anchor what people think and the comments you'll expect and who, attract, who will be attracted to things or not. Um, and so, uh, you know, and then sort of, I guess, build awareness. Um, so the proposals that I've got up uh, that I'm personally working on um, are incredibly technical. Um, mm -hmm. So I've had to spend quite a bit of time teaching people about what they are and why you would care. Um, yeah. You know, that, that sort of thing. And that's what I've had to yeah. do. Well, I guess in the, in this uh, uh, scenario that you mentioned, it's a bit of a double whammy because it's pioneering from a blockchain point of view, but pioneering from a sustainable mm. finance point of view. I'm trying to bring them two to get mm. bring the two together in a very dynamic um, sort of uh, ecosystem. Um, uh, you know, in a, I guess a cutting edge way is. Uh, you know, I can understand why you know maybe ninety five percent of people would sort of scratch their heads and wonder how do we bring this together but it's good that you're pushing the envelope and you know getting the awareness out there for sure so hmm. but yeah it definitely give me something to think about uh, just in terms of approach uh, for sure um uh, robert would you be i mean can i be so direct as to ask whether you'd be um open for um an initial discussion on the idea is that too direct or no, you can do that if you want to do it here. That's fine, or if you want it separately, that's fine as well. Totally yeah. up to you. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't mind doing it here for sure. Just uh, I don't want to um, prematurely get put it out there without um, sort of being able to articulate myself, um, you know, as 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 well as possible. So I might do it uh, next week if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, that's um, that's fine. I'm happy to yeah. share it, put it out there. Um, yeah. But don't don't be afraid. I mean, um, no, the, this. This whole space, this whole piece of technology crosses so many different disciplines, right? So many levels of understanding. To really kind of get a picture of things, you know, you've got to be technical. You've got to have some finance. You've probably got to have some understanding of law. You've got to have some understanding of the business, then in the business side of things and what, you know, goes on there. Uh, you may also have to have, um, you know, good economics understanding. Um, a whole lot of different things. So actually, very, very few people, if any, know much how to apply this stuff, right? So yeah. no one's going to yeah. um, be perfect off the scrap, off, off, off um, you know, the starting block. Yeah. So don't, yeah, don't be true. worried about, yeah. um, you know, throwing out rough ideas out and um, uh, testing them, trying them out. Yeah. It helps. Yeah, yeah. No, fair enough, fair enough. I, I guess I just want to um, be able to, you know, um, let's say effectively articulate the core elements of the proposal, mm. but you're 100% right. To bring it to its fruition, which could take five, 10 years, um, you know, because it has so many different layers of potential, will require a, a, like a, a quite a vast group of people with diverse skills to make it happen, you know? Mm. So, um, but yeah, no problem. Next week, I think I'll um, I'll just collect my thoughts on it a little bit more because it's not advanced stage. Um, and then I'm yeah, happy to share it um, in this forum. Yeah. And yeah, we'll take it from there. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I mean, I'm here. I can answer any sort of questions yeah. to, today, to tomorrow, um, next week as yeah. well. So that's no problem. The same goes with you, Rick. If you, if you want to uh, yeah. knock around some details of your ideas, um, believe me, I can... Uh, I can wax lyrical about a lot of things. <laughs> and I can push I think, you know, I think my, my, my sort of ideas would fit in with your social environmental um, uh, challenge. And so, um, yeah, I don't know whether to submit it as a, as a, as a in, in the what, the insight, the insight section. 
I, the first week is about insight. Insight where, phase. Yeah, just the insight phase where you're just testing ideas out. And you might put up one to a dozen little insights, and then they'll just get right. um, archived after the week. The whole idea is really just to get people engaged, get people thinking awareness. about awareness, yeah. those sort of things. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. that's that's the uh, purpose of the yeah. first week uh, when you come into seven. Okay, and that's happening sometime in early November, like um, I think no, I heard the eleventh of November. Yeah, um, mid November. Fund seven right starts. Now. That's what I heard. So yeah. it ties in with your mid November um, yeah. comments earlier, Robert. Yeah, yeah. But I think Look, just I could, on the ES, I'm sorry. Go on, Red. Yeah, I could. I I've, I've written. I've sort of written down a lot of the sort of uh, the roadmap or the ideas, the insight. I'd say for insight phase, there's no. There's no cost to it or anything, but um, I could finish that off and perhaps uh, email it to you, Robert, and see what you think. Uh, yeah, by all means. Uh, just suck us a note. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. because from a technical point of view, you probably come back and say, well, this is just too too much or something, you know. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I don't know if the Cardano, I mean, you, you've played, you, you know exactly what's going on. I've seen, I've seen um, big, the, the big company talk about the block, a block, a blockchain going with, going on their own. I mean, there's lots of, lots of people doing it besides Cardano. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, um, the Cardano system allows this sort of collaboration, but um, uh, well, there's different yeah. different environments. Um, so a blockchain itself these days is pretty much a commodity. I could pick and choose. I could pick to do it on um, Bitcoin with Rootstock. I could do Mina. I could use Agoric. I could use Solana. I could use Ethereum, um, Avalanche. There's a whole bunch of different ones out there, uh, and they've all got a focus in some way or another. Um, and right. there's there's a community around them that is garnered because of that particular focus or what they're trying to achieve. So Solana, for example, mm. is really trying to take on high frequency trading. That's what they're trying to do for DeFi kind of space. So they're right. optimized for really high throughput sort of transactions. Uh, whereas you know, Bitcoin obviously is gearing itself towards being the store of value. So doesn't like to change much and doesn't offer much in the way of extended features. Ethereum being early in the, yeah. in the starting picture was really just kind of like experimenting with the so-called world, world computer and then they sort of stepped back from that. And they've kind of become the DeFi platform for a moment, but their success has been killing them because of the high gas fees and stuff. And so you've had Avalanche and Solana pop up, which are both competing for high throughput. Um, wow. And so, Whereas uh, Cardano's focus has been always very squarely on Africa or developing nations and reaching out there. So it's designed according to that. Um, and okay. this, so they, uh, yeah, uh, the, the larger, the larger ca capturing data on larger, yeah, I know the, that, that prism, that prism app. Um, yeah, no, it's just as you say. It's it's. I think the Cardano focus is what I like, um, uh, as a as a as a blockchain. I suppose so there's, um, there's, there's, it isn't only Africa. Africa they're focused on. I'm sure they must be. No, they're on, they're, they're you know, focused on improving all over lives. Them. I suppose. Yeah, there is an I, IOG itself as a company has got a strong strategic focus into Africa, and by virtue of that. That's also meaning that they're trying to do a lot of stuff in Africa, but it's global. This technology is global, right? One of the things there is a key difference. Um, there's a key different aspect to the community um, uh, compared to say like Bitcoin or Ethereum, just for yep. comparing three, um, or even like Binance Chain. I mean, they've all got trade-offs, right? But they are a commodity. I could literally go onto any one of the chains and I'll be fine, right? Personally, I would be. Um, there's a big difference between the Kadana community itself, the community vibe, the focus, the interest, than, say, Ethereum or Bitcoin. 
right, or even Solana, right. right? There's a quite a big difference there. So um, yes, Ethereum has the bulk of the developer mindshare, has most of the exem examples out there in terms of what's being used with uh, um, blockchains, DeFi, use cases, yeah. yeah, use cases and stuff like that. Without a doubt, they're way ahead, you know, in that sense. Mm. Um, but as I said earlier, because of the gas fees and the problems that they've got, other underlying things, um, it's I've created an opportunity for other chains to come in and do different things. Now, Cardano itself is differentiating because it's trying to do this notion of economic identity, which is there's, uh, which means that you've got things like a Tala Prism on there, right? Which means that you've got yeah. things like the way the proof of stake system is designed is designed to be egalitarian. Uh, um, and you know, energy efficient, and so that it can run on smaller machines. A lot of that focus on economic identity um, actually has manifested itself in the technical architecture of Cardano, um, because mm. they're saying you know, these are the trade-offs. Um, when you're engineering anything, you're always making trade-offs. You can't do any, everything and any, anything. Um, and so your vision or your focus is going to make you change the architecture, right? So right. two right. contrasting examples is I can run a stake pool on, you know, the high-end Raspberry Pi, which is a pretty small computer, right? I say high-end because it's got to have about eight gig of memory as minimum sort of thing. Um, whereas Solana, no way in hell I'd be able to do that. I need a machine that costs about $20,000 to run the, uh, a validating node, right? And I've got to have 10, super high... 10,000. 10,000, yeah. Um, and I've got to have high connectivity wow. because it focuses on throughput. It's trying to push through as many transactions as quickly as possible because its use case is decentralized finance. All right. Um, so those are right. sort of things so that you might try to... Hmm. Okay, so the the one that does games, what, which would that would be? Solana, uh, the games, the games. Um, there's one blockchain. called. Uh, there's one called Flux or something. Like that. I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, you Fox. haven't followed the yeah. Flow, no. it's Flyfox. Yeah, actually, it's Vietnam. A bunch of Aussies in Vietnam. I think it's called Flyfox or something like that. Uh, yeah. It's a gaming. Um, it's a gaming platform. Yeah. But um, so yeah. You, yeah. yeah, I think it's. Uh, well, you've got gaming Red platforms Fox. on Ethereum. Sorry, I think it's well. Red Fox. Is, does Red Fox ring a bell, guys? No, no idea. Um, yeah, there are literally in Vietnam a bunch. Of, yeah, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, yeah. of blockchains. All right, different ones that yeah, do different yeah. configurations. Yeah. Yeah. I could literally yeah. take the Cardano technical stack, as is today, because it's all open source, and create my own network if I wanted to do mm. that, right? But I'd right. still have to have the cost of trying to build a community around it. Yeah. So, yes. I mean... The community is the important thing. Yeah. 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 Um, and okay. so... Yeah, I uh, think it's... Yep. Yeah, I'll just, I was just, just going to say, yeah, I think it's, um, it's smart um, focusing on the developing space. I mean, Africa is huge, huge opportunities, as we know. It's more a medium, longer-term play. For sure, there's a lot of energy on the ground and creativity, and that's what that's what I think uh, Kadana is tapping into. Uh, but once that um, train starts to get momentum, it's going to get it's going to work very fast. Because in my experience, vis-a-vis um, -vis other markets. Uh, there's a lot of energy, creativity, a sense of urgency, hunger, not in the sense of food, but hunger to succeed and move forward. And yeah. when you, when you get, I think, give the Africa, a lot of African content, um, the continent, um, uh, sort of a tool that will enable them to move to the next phase, then that's an uh, unbelievably powerful thing. I think with the mobile money is one example of technology leveraging you know, um, a lot of the needs of the African uh, consumers on the ground um, in a very rapid way. I mean, the penetration rate, I think, in places like um, Ghana, Kenya, you know, Nigeria, in terms of mobile phone, um, you know, um, mobile money is quite, quite um, huge. So, 
so yeah, I, th uh, I think uh, Ethereum got a, like a early sort of start and it's playing where the money is today, you know, whether it's NFTs in the USA or whatever else. Um, but uh, I think Cardano in terms of medium, longer term uh, will pay dividends, especially, you know, some of the government stuff they're doing in Ethiopia in terms of digital identification and, and so on. So um, so I think it's good to have a bet each way, to be honest, in terms of investment. Um, it's good to put some money on both coins and um, and then play a bit of short term and get some medium long term benefits as well. So oh. right. Well, so so the reality yeah. is like there's there's lots of different blockchains. Some of them are specializing. Some of them are managing to create a community around them. Cardano obviously has. Um, the reality is that they represent a really 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 tiny component of the world economy at the moment so there's enough yeah. for all of us to play yeah all right? yeah yeah really yeah, that's a fair point. yeah um so um there's enough uh opportunity in lots of different areas to be able to play in different ways um and you know if ethereum has an overwhelming focus in america and and um uh not necessarily because of choice but that's just what happened um so in the western space um, they're doing some really interesting things. It means you can come in and uh, see if you can see what's working over there and try to so well, what can work here with this different focus. Um, yes, one of the key things I think which is very valuable to Cardano is the fact, and this was always a, a key insight that Charles had with respect to IOG or even when Ethereum was set up when he was the CEO of Ethereum Cat. Um, was that he wanted to have a commercial um, entity that was driving it, that was at the heart of it. Um, there was a lot of reasons for that, um, but one of the big benefits of having IOG and everything they do is intended to be open source and everything they do is intended to be on Cardano, right, um, means that they've got a huge commercial and solutions push, which means that they're going into governments, which means they're going into enterprises. And it's built to run enterprise systems. Right? It's built to run government stuff. I couldn't say that about Ethereum. Right? Um, as opposed to, say, like yeah. Hyperledger and stuff like that, which has got an overwhelming focus on um, uh, enterprise and government. Right? But not in the open internet. Um, so unlike you know something like Hyperledger or Ethereum and stuff like that, where they try to tailor it for um, the enterprise sector or the government sector, uh, one of the key things is people want someone to phone up and for support. You kind of really mentioned that before. Well, IOG is there to provide that support. Um, they build those relationships that are necessary to go into enterprise sales or necessary to go into government sales. Ethereum doesn't really have that. It has a whole bunch of loose entities sort of working together and stuff like that. And one of the big advantages also is having a treasury, which again, Ethereum and Bitcoin don't have. Um, so somehow they have to try and fund the development of the actual network, the network technology itself. Whereas the idea behind uh, the Catalyst Treasury is that that will eventually fund a huge amount of the actual uh, development of the underlying technology and technologies that build on top of it. Um, so in this case here, you know, like a Tyler Prism, which is sitting on top of it. But because the focus is on economic um, identity, we've got to focus on things like digital identity, which timing-wise is uh, becoming actually really, really important uh, because governments yeah. are wanting to do digital, their version of digital identity, right? Um, so these mm -hmm. different so, pieces stacked up all start to, um, uh, you know, end up being quite important, you know, over, but ultimately, um, so, there's lots of room to play. Yeah, can I just ask you a question here, um, mm -hmm. gauging what people think that this, this government push for a central bank digital currency, CBDC. Mm. Mm. Um, the one, the one comment I saw on a on a coin desk email or something was that it's going to rob the person, the one guy, so somebody or other, rob the person of their um, financial independence or something because 
with if you have this CBDC come in, the governments will be able to trace where you spend your money, a bit like China is going to do. They'll be they'll be using it to to trace what their citizens are doing, where they're spending their money, and if they get out of hand, they'll just stop them, stop the stop the the sort of money supply. So I don't I don't see it as a good thing. The CBDC. Um. So it is actually probably one of the most radical things out there, the fact that central banks are even talking about doing this. That's actually really radical um, because what they're actually proposing is to manage direct retail relationships with their customers, hold retail accounts, yeah. which is really unusual for a central bank to do when they're going through the private banking sector. So that's really radical. Um, they, from all the stuff I've seen around the CBDC stuff, and I've looked at the biz reports, I've looked at the Canadian stuff, and I've just seen what the New Zealand government's pushing out as well around uh, doing that. Largely, they kind of want to have their cake and eat it too, which is they want to the control of the monetary supply, but hey, we've got all the same AML, CTF, uh, um, C counterterrorism funding stuff, AML, KYC requirements and stuff like that. We want to hold on to that. Right. Um, probably the, the, from what I can tell, um, and Jack may be able to comment a little bit more on this, but from what I can tell, um, the regulators are worried about two things. They're worried about stable coins and they're worried about DeFi, right? Um, so uh, basically because those two things hit at the heart of the existing open money, monetary policies of most governments, stable coins in particular, are basically what central banks do. They provide a stable, relatively stable um, unit of account. That's their role, okay? And as a result of providing that, it gives them the ability to inflate the economy, right? To keep it going and get an inflation rate of one or 2% or whatever they're trying to do. And they do that in various different ways. Okay. Um, so stable coins actually represent quite a significant threat to them. Um, so it's not a surprise that they're coming in to try and do, on that level, trying to do CBDC. And to be honest, for average retailer, retailer or consumer, average consumer, um, that knows nothing about this technology or anything else, convenience wins. Okay. Now, here in New Zealand, for example, we've had payment cards since 1992. We've had basically New Zealanders classed as largely a cashless society, right? I don't know. I cannot tell you the last time I bought anything with cash. I don't know when that was, yep. right? Um, I've got Jack goes off and pays with his, his watch. I pay with my phone. I've got we've got our uh, everything's you know pin. We haven't. I can't tell you when the last time I actually had to sign for something. Um, uh, so we've largely been cashless for a long, long time. Um, our tax revenue service here gets a direct feed of all transactions, right? And right. what's going on and processing and things like that. So the mere fact that they're trying to do a, a central bank to do a currency doesn't actually change that too much, what's going on. Yeah, of course. For, 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 for civilized places like New Zealand and Australia, where the governments can't really turn around and block, block your account. But um, in Africa, I, you can't say that. You know, it's, um, there, was a, there was a, I don't know if you're aware, Bob, and there was a, there was a guy in, in Zimbabwe who had his own uh, mobile money called EcoCash. And he had it because he also ran the cell phone towers. And uh, I think the government just played around with the, with, with, with the, with the exchange rates and all sorts of things. And, and uh, this guy was, was yet to, yet to pan it to the government's communist government to, to keep everything going. So um, right. I, I agree. I mean, I use, I, use, I use a wallet on my phone as well. And I think, I think it's not a bad thing, but I can choose which bank I go to. And um, uh it's it's also in a, in a place like china it saves them printing out all the money 
must cost a fortune for, for, for what, 1,400 million people to print out all the money. Right. Um, so one so, of the things here, though, is that um, uh, I, I don't know. One, convenience will trump anything in terms of like as a payment instrument for cash replacements, right? Convenience will always win. Um, but there is this sort of thing like Nigeria, I think, tried to ban Bitcoin and things and couldn't. Right. And so people will go to, uh, you know, the good money, basically. They'll move to where the good money is if, there's a, if they've got an option. And in many cases, a lot of the blockchain-based uh, distributed ledger stuff does give them an option. Right. In countries like New Zealand and Australia and other things like that, um, the, uh, the actual good money would be the reserve bank money, digital CDBC. Right, central bank digital currency, as opposed to a stable coin, because there's no risk. That's the idea of a stable coin. Yeah, there's no yeah, risk. Yeah. Um, but in other countries, like the ones you just mentioned, where there is risk, there is inflationary risk, there is other things, then people would probably move to an alternative. And the thing was, in the past, there wasn't any significant alternative that couldn't be shut down easily. Uh, um, so in your example there, you could shut that um, mobile mini airtime or whatever as cash down because you could go and uh, attack the, the head person. You, know, you could go lock them up, you could yep. threaten them, that sort of thing. But you can't do that to Satoshi because no one knows who Satoshi is. You, know? you can't do that to any of the Kadana network. You know? So what they'd have to do is then target all the exchanges and all the um, little agent stores and things like that all around the place, and they'll have a hard time doing that. Um, so those, those are the sort of things. I would say that they'll try and resist. The comments, I've watched the comments over the, over the time, like the, the head of the Biz uh, uh, Bank of International Settlements is classic where he was going, oh, this is rubbish, this is rubbish. Oh, no, it's not going to go anywhere. Now they're saying, oh, we need to set up standards and stuff like that for, for um, banks to do central bank digital currencies. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, these things will evolve. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, it's I going to be a very dynamic um, space over the next five, 10 years. So yeah. <laughs> we'll have to hold on for the ride. But um yeah, so look, uh, from my point of view, just in terms of um, what we've discussed, uh, I think I don't have any more concrete questions. I, I don't mind chatting uh, more gen generally, um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start working on the proposal and then um, next week, just share it with you guys or with the team, whoever's on the call, and we can take it from there. Absolutely. Yeah, by all means. Yeah. On that, by all means on that front. No problem at all. Um, but yeah. uh, Rick, you were, you were starting to talk about um, ESG or um, uh, other related areas. Do you have sort of questions around that? Um, so, sorry, say that again. Were you talking about ESG? Talking about? ESG. Or was that you, Bob? ES, what's ESG? Uh, what's ESG? Uh, environmental and social governance. Uh, uh, it's EC reporting, government. Sustainability. Governance, all the sustainability. Well, stuff. when you when you mention so when you mention social and environmental, that's the sort of uh, target area that my proposal is going to be looking at. Um, I'm really looking for to develop an alternative to Bitcoin um, that doesn't use up so much. Uh, that's just a complete waste of resources, and that's part of it. And uh, so that'll be, you know, when you get my email, you can have a look and see if, see if that's, um, isn't that's that, that you think um, about because isn't that what uh, Kadano does though? <laughs> Is, uh, in terms of uh, this would this would this would be this would be a bit more palatable, I think, um, more direct and more palatable than. Um, uh, Cardano, Cardano to me, I mean, I, if you, I don't know if you were around, you might have been around, Rob, but I, I, I remember I used, I did my, my time at, univer at university with a slide rule. Yep. And then I, I, um, 
went on and I did a bit of programming and basic to solve, to do a bit of calculations. And then DOS came along. And then after DOS came Windows, and then all the wonderful programs that came out of Windows. Now I see I see um, Cardano at the sort of DOS level, and I see a lot of programs. So we calling them. I don't know what you're calling them, but basically you've got DOS and you've got all these software on top of DOS. Um, then it became Windows and software on top of Windows and apps and all the rest of it. So to me, Cardano is just another DOS, and and it's going to be. There is a difference. It's not controlled. Us. I don't know. Is there a difference? Um, we've got we've got we've got Apple and we've got Windows. I don't know if there's anything else. Um, but now with the blockchain, you've got many many more that you can build up apps on. And is that sort of right thinking? Uh, yep, that's correct. Yep. So. Um, uh, yeah, so I see, I see in the future, Cardano and, and the blockchain might be superseded by something else. But that's, in, you know, like, like DOS has been superseded now with blockchain, there's been more security, it has more security in it and more decentralized, I think. Um, yeah, but you, you brought up the uh, idea yeah, so, of um, that Bitcoin was a waste from an environmental standpoint. Um, so that's referring to what's re uh, the consensus mechanism, which is referred to as proof of work. Right. No, um, I, I, yeah, I, I see. I see a whole lot of computers using up energy to calculate a a number mm -hmm. as a complete waste of energy. All right. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to that, you've got you've got a bunch of men uh, digging holes. At smelting gold. So you've got gold coming out the ground at maybe 1300 US dollars. And I don't know how much energy that takes versus Bitcoin, which is using up huge amounts of energy. And it's really, uh, yeah, your, your proof, proof of stake is a is lot, lot, lot cheaper and not, not wasteful. But, but Bitcoin itself should go. It needs to go. It needs to be, it needs to be, you know, because it's just nonsense. It's just, but in terms, of proposing, in, in terms of proposing an alternative to Bitcoin, which is where you started, um, what, yeah. um, given that you've got proof of stake, which is very energy efficient, particularly the Cardano implementation. Um, yeah, no, no, this is, this is something else. I'd, I'd rather send it to you in the email than you can read the whole thing because it's, that'll be the sort of third level of, of what, I'm, what I'm going down, the third okay. layer, because it was as it were. So it's a, a, a bit like what, what, what Charles has done. You've got the IOG, then you've got a foundation, then you've got Cardano, and then you've got the rest of it. And I'm just thinking, I've worked out how to, using, using the, um, the community uh, and the Cardano type uh, software to um, facilitate this. And it would be global, it's not just Africa. Okay. It's, um, but to replace Bitcoin to me is is number one because it's just and these other stupid things that all right they aren't using energy they just play grounds for the rich to bloody guys like Elton Musk telling people to buy this nonsense Doge yeah Jackson yeah. some Doge well, to try and, to try and um, I mean Bitcoin's not here to defend itself um, but from what I've heard it's um, the energy efficiency is uh, rapidly evolving in the right direction, but I, I'm not sure uh, if if you took that to its uh, you know ultimate uh, scenario, how good that would be. You know, proof of uh, sort of work versus proof of stake. I mean, it'll never be as energy efficient as Cardano, right, guys? Uh, yeah. Well, my understanding is they just use uh, sustainable energy. They don't change the system. So no, instead of you're, you're cold, correct. Um, yeah. You're, yeah. Um, yeah. So right, yeah. yeah, Bitcoin is pretty much stuck in the proof of work, work domain, which is doing hard computational problem. Ethereum mm -hmm. is also in the proof of work domain, but they're trying to move to proof of stake. So that's what yeah. Ethereum two is. 
Uh, and there's various different proof of stake chains out there. Cardano is one of them. Yeah, so Tesos, um, EOS, um, Polkadot, Cosmos, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, and they all use slight, they all use different approaches, but you I'd be very surprised if you could get um, more energy efficient than the way the Cardano is implemented. Um, it's pretty much as low as you could go for what it does. Uh, and that's yeah, really I mean, right. yeah, I'm not. Uh, this 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 concept doesn't worry about what the software is. Hmm. It's just it's just yeah. There's another yeah. So if I send it to you on an email, you can have a look at it and see if you 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 reckon we could could make something out of it and um, go from there. Okay. Sounds interesting, Rhett. Hmm. Sounds sounds like an interesting idea you've got there. So well, yeah, good, yeah good I mean, it's, it, it needs to happen. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of environmental stuff, help Africa, um, you know, all that sort of stuff is out there. But look, I mean, and, the, uh, yeah, to your point, um, the whole environmental consciousness um, could exponentially, um, I mean, it probably will be exponentially more um, relevant for everybody and out there. So in that context, Bitcoin, uh, whilst it has its uh, you know popularity and its demands and its role, um, it could uh, you know become the black sheep amongst all the uh, sort of um, you know all the offers in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, there's obviously been a good amount of discussion on that topic in in recent year anyway. Um, but uh, you know, with the way the world's going, maybe people will look at it and say unacceptable. Um, we just can't, yeah. you know, move and, forward and, with that. And but trouble, just on your point of uh, sorry, the trouble. So, Robert, I was just going to no, say no. I'll. I'll, I'll alternative being marketed at the moment to oppose Bitcoin, which is which which will have some real work and some real value to the whole world, you see. So yeah, it's better if someone, yeah, like Rob reads it and yeah, he can yeah. mush out all the his, yeah. his history that he has with the with the yeah, okay. Ghana stuff. And yeah, then no we can, the we yeah, can, we no can talk about it next week. Yeah. But just, just before I go, if it's okay, yeah. guys, um, yeah. I had one, one last point. Just on the ESG metrics, you know, the, the Germans have been doing the that triple bottom line reporting for like 20, 30 years, right? So I'm thinking if, we, if you look in the annual reports of the best in class environmentally conscious German business, they should have some metrics because they've reported, you know, stuff on environment and social. I mean, they, they'd be way ahead of us. I mean, yeah. So, so, yeah. so does yeah, that make sense or is it off the mark? Um, yeah, it it kind of makes sense. Um, but the, the key point I think I was making here is the, the social and environmental one, finance one is actually about bringing uh, DeFi closer to, to solve social and environmental problems. Now, to do a lot of the social and environmental uh, finance, you actually need a lot of data, which is quite richer or thicker than what you would normally do in finance. Um, and so as a result, within DeFi, um, you've had these new metrics that have, have developed. One of the most prominent ones is total value locked, the TLV. Um, and that's based on or predicated on the idea that you have what are called automated market makers and that there's a reserve that's in there to make these things work. And so in order to make them work, you have things called liquidity providers. Liquidity providers provide value and they lock it into the contract. That's where TLV comes from. Um, so when this was a completely new metric, uh, because most of finance doesn't operate on automated market makers. They operate quite differently. Um, so also you've got metrics like um, the daily or monthly active wallets, which doesn't make sense in traditional finance. In the case of triple bottom line sort of accounting models, uh, they are not necessarily the same as ESG finance, um, the different types of metrics. Accounting mm -hmm. yeah. uh, typically associates with uh, absolute values, Finance typically associates with ratios. Um, and so you're trying to find the right uh, metrics for the space because no one's explored it, new territory. 
what do they look like? Uh, do I, I've got ideas, uh, but to be honest, um, that would be a little bit too difficult to put onto this proposal for, for yeah, uh, yeah. What, what people are thinking about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, no uh, problem. Uh, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate your time, everybody. Um, nice to meet you guys. Red, nice to meet you as well. Yeah, good luck with it. Robin. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch maybe next week. Uh, yeah, it'll be, good be good to see you. Be good to see you next week. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we talk through you. Yeah. Nice to see you. See Thanks. you later. Yeah, yeah. Take care, yeah. Jack. Cheers. Bye bye. Right, uh, so, see you later. Cheers. 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 I'm going to leave the room. Uh, have you, have, oops. Have, have you sent me an email? Sorry. Uh, I send you one on the chat. Uh, hold up. You can send it uh, there in the chat. Yeah. Okay. We will ask. We will ask when I pick it up. It's in the chat of the room.